great. Thank you. Yep, just keep an eye out for me, or for us. I'm not sure if he's going to be coming with me or not. Oh, that's good little, that yeah. fine little stuff burns really well. Um, I was able to make contact with the people at that hospital again. Oh, yeah. They, they said that uh, we could still go there if we wanted. Hmm. They have plenty of supplies and they seem to be safer in numbers. Yeah. Well, before, you know, we didn't know if they were the people trying to trick us out of the house. I mean, I guess maybe they're... They're not that, because those people are, it seem mostly dead, but uh, I don't know, there's just no way of knowing whether it's some other kind of a trick. I mean, there's a bunch of cannibals hanging out at a hospital. I really, I highly doubt that. I okay, mean, well, maybe that's a bit extreme, but, yeah. uh, but still, I mean, how do you know you can trust them? I mean, people say anything, they can sound pretty convincing. Right, but, you know, we don't have anything out here. I mean, firewood. But if they have food, it's a better chance. I think we're going to do better with the traps that I set. I mean, at some point they're going to catch something, and I feel like I'm getting a little bit better with the hunting thing. I don't know. I just don't want to go walk into a trap after we just escaped from one. I'm sorry I had to disappear like this, but I thought it would be better if I just slipped off. First, I wanted to thank you for taking me in and taking care of me these past weeks. You didn't need to do that, and I appreciate it. I might have died if you hadn't helped me, and I'm sorry that I held a gun to your head. I headed for that group at the hospital in Greenville. I know it's a risk going there, but it's a risk staying out here too. And even if it is safer to just hide from the world, I wouldn't want to live out the rest of my life being completely isolated. I took two granola bars and a water bottle to get me to Greenville. I feel bad about taking it, but I'll need the energy to get there. And if you look on the bright side, everything in that bucket is now yours. I'm also taking the rifle, and I do feel bad about that. I'm sorry. I hope you don't hate me, but if you change your mind and come to the hospital, I'll keep an eye out for you, and I'll let them know that you're one of the good guys. So, that's it. Thank you for saving my life. Monica. I can't blame Monica at all for deciding to leave and go look for those people that said they had a really, really great setup. I don't agree with that decision. Obviously, I'd rather put my, my faith in myself and my own skill set. Uh, and you know, my own good fortune and luck, uh, then put my faith in some question mark off somewhere. Um, but I'm not going to criticize her decision. I think everyone has to make their own decision. And my decision uh, for now is to move my camp. Uh, if the people that Monica contacted are not as they represented themselves, if they're just a small group and they're looking for people uh, to extract resources from, I don't want Monica to be compelled to, you know, say that she was with someone else, myself, and that I had resources, and have that group come looking for me at my camp. So I've decided I've broken down my camp, and I'm heading out to a new location somewhere. The place where, we, where Monica and I had been, well, there wasn't anything special or magical about that anyway. So there very well may be better places, you know, somewhere else anyhow. So I, I, you know, I'm not shedding any tears over losing the camp. Uh, while I'm moving, I'm going to be doing something a little bit differently than I had done in the past. When Monica and I were fleeing from my burning shell of a homestead, uh, there was a fair degree of urgency. We just wanted to move, 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 and get as much distance between that and all those people and us as possible. Uh, at this point, I feel like there's a, 
a, a lot more time for me. So what I'm going to be doing is implementing some counter tracking measures where I'm going to try to prevent people from being able to, or at least easily able to follow where I've gone. Now, if there was a professional tracker on my trail, none of the stuff that I'm doing here would do anything more than possibly slow them down. But for a lay person or someone that just has some basic tracking skills, there are a lot of things that you can do to make your trail harder to follow. And I'm going to be doing a lot of those things today as I move through this wilderness towards I don't know what, <laughs> but we'll find out. As I'm moving through the woods, I'm paying a lot of attention to the idea of leaving footprints, uh, of not overturning leaves and things. Uh, I don't want to be snapping twigs or, uh, you know, even bending things over, flipping things over. Uh, I want to essentially leave things just as I've found them. Uh, even the idea of breaking spider webs for a professional tracker, I guess that's something that people will, will look for. So I'm paying a lot of attention to what's on the ground and I'm trying to leave it that way, just the way that it was. There are all sorts of things that you can do on a terrain like this, where I have mostly just kind of crushed leaves underneath me. Um, but uh, there are certain areas that make it just really difficult to hide your tracks, and those areas are called honeypot areas. Those are things like, like a, a wide expanse of sand or, or mud, um, you know, where you're just clearly going to be leaving tracks. Those kind of honeypot areas, I'm going to be just trying to avoid as much as I possibly can, or, you know, just just completely avoid. Uh, and, and also I'm going to be implementing uh, uh, the use of places where you can't, uh, you can't track uh, through. And actually I'm coming up to one right now, and that is uh, streams. So I think I'm actually going to hop in here and walk upstream for a little ways and, uh, and see if I can, uh, you know, just distance myself from the, the small tracks that I've been leaving just while I've been talking. Right here is one of those classic honeypot setups. Uh, there is a bend in the river and it's thrown up a lot of sand and debris and it's just nice and smooth, perfect for laying tracks in. Even a, a child you know, would see tracks if I, if I left tracks going through here. So this is very easy to you know, leave tracks in, very easy for people to pick up tracks. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this honeypot as a way of possibly fooling someone that might be trying to track me. I've been walking down this, this stream here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I'm exiting right here. I'm going to walk across these as though I'm going off in this direction. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to backtrack over my tracks, go right back into the water, and then continue down the river. And I'll walk for a while further, and then I'm going to exit off on the other side. So I'm going to do that right now. I've been walking down this stream for a while now and it's given me an opportunity to think about what I did back at that honeypot location and I'm thinking that that might have been kind of a mistake. I believe that if anybody was tracking me and they you know, had the ability to you know, follow my trail up to the stream, they were going to see through that pretty ham-handed ploy that I did. Like why, they would be thinking like, for me, why would I go through the trouble of walking through water and then exit at such an obvious place where there were plenty of other places I could have exited that would have been less obvious. So I think that was probably a mistake, but you know, what's done is done. Those tracks are back there. I'm not gonna try to go back and erase them. So my plan at this point is to try to, try to find a place that is a little more subtle for me to exit this stream that'll leave some evidence uh, where I can exit for a while, walk for a bit, you know, uh, then get out into some uh, terrain that's a little bit harder to follow on, like those leaves, and then backtrack over my tracks back here to the stream, and then walk down further and exit at a place that is much more subtle. Uh, so in that way they'll feel like they're following my tracks and that they're following an honest attempt by me to, you know, to get out of the stream instead of this really obvious kind of like walking over honeypot track. So I feel like that was a mistake. I can't undo it at this point. But what I can try to do is to try to make the best of the situation that I have. So right now what I'm looking for is a place to, to exit where I can leave some subtle tracks, 
backtrack and then continue down until I can find some place where I can get out of here on like a log or a rock uh, where I can you know, get pretty far away from the stream before I start leaving any tracks at all. One technique that I found that I can use while I'm out here is that there are an awful lot of uh, animal trails, wild animal trails, and uh, following along those, I'm not really trampling things any more than they already are, so it makes it very easy to move through reasonably large distances without having to really worry that much about every single leaf, stick, and stem. Sometimes when you're traveling, it's very difficult to avoid areas where it's easy to leave tracks in. And I've been facing that a lot in the latter part of the day today. Uh, there are a lot of open sandy areas, and it's just really difficult to get around them without, you know, really, really going crazy, you know, off to the side. So I've been passing through some of those, but to try to minimize my tracks, what I've been doing is taking a branch and trying to clean up the tracks behind me just to make them so they're not quite so obvious. It's not ideal, but uh, given the alternative, which is walking miles and miles around these open sandy areas, uh, you know, it seems like the best alternative. I know that a lot of people who just do uh, smuggling, uh, you know, either human trafficking or, or uh, you know, narcotics across the southwestern border of the United States. Uh, when they were walking across desert areas, would put on like kind of big fluffy shoes made out of like carpet scraps and things of that nature, just to try to break up the obviousness of their tracks. Now I don't have big cartoon character, you know, <laughs> style boots with me, but I'm improvising with what I have and just trying to make it a little bit less clear, less obvious where I've crossed over these areas. I've been traveling all day and I think it's time to get some rest for the evening. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit cool out, but I don't think I'm going to do a fire. You know, if I was going to do a fire, one way of kind of hiding it to mask the fire is to dig kind of a pit in the ground and have the fire down inside of the pit, put stones around it to keep the light from shooting out through the woods. But an even better way of avoid, avoiding being seen is to not have a fire at all. And I think I'm, I'm fine doing that tonight. So I'm just going to set up a really primitive camp and I pull out the tarp just prop it up with a couple of sticks so, you know, if it drizzles or rains, I'm not going to get wet. Uh, and, uh, and then I'm going to head out tomorrow. As I've been going out today, there's been a lot of this sandy terrain here. And I don't know if my ears are playing tricks on me, but I, I think, I think I'm here in the ocean up ahead. So that would be kind of interesting. Uh, you know, if there is ocean out here, that could present a lot of opportunities for food that I could gather right off of the landscape, you know, crustaceans and things of that nature. Um, it might present some challenges for getting uh, fresh drinking water, uh, you know, because of the salt and everything, but we'll face that challenge tomorrow and, uh, and see what we've got. But uh, I think I did pretty well traveling today. I don't think that I've been followed. I think that this whole, uh, this whole endeavor of trying to cover up my trails was hopefully unnecessary, but it makes me feel a lot better just knowing that I'm leaving all that trouble from yesterday behind me and I get a fresh start tomorrow, possibly with an ocean horizon. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.